kind of muscle it up and add the horsepower, and they just expanded to Richmond, Virginia for their second location. But here's, he's here today to talk about True Colors Brewing. And um, I won't steal George's thunder, I'll let him explain what it does, but it is really changing Wilmington, North Carolina, and I'll let George explain how. Thanks. George Taylor. Thanks, Jim, I appreciate it, and thanks for having me. Um, True Colors got started really as an idea. Most of the startups I do, we, we think about them a lot, right? And, they, and we have ideas, but we take a lot of planning time and we, we get organized, we put together a business plan. True Colors is a little bit different. Uh, it started about two and a half years ago when two days before Christmas, there was a 16 year old that got shot uh, in a drive-by and killed uh, about, I don't know, six or seven blocks up from my office. And at the time, I didn't even know we had gangs involved in Wilmington. I, I live in a gated community, and we have different kind of gangs there. <laughs> but, uh, but I didn't know. Uh, but I thought it was absurd that someone thought it was a good idea to drive down our streets and wave a gun out of a car and pull the trigger and kill somebody. So I reached out to our district attorney, Ben David. I'm like, man, I, whoever top gangster in this town, I want to meet this dude because this is freaking stupid. So Ben connected me with a uh, gang task force who hooked me in with who they thought was top gangster in town. And that's sort of how this got started. And I spent the next, um, I don't know, year, year and a half hanging out with these guys and got to know a whole lot of gang members. We have about seven to 800 active gang members in Wilmington and you have more here in, in Raleigh. Um, and what I learned was really important. I learned, I guess, first of all, it's very much an economic issue that drives this violence. It's not racial, it's not social, it's not lack of education. These guys that are leading gangs are actually quite intelligent. They get a lot, they, they get stuff done, as you might imagine. Um, and then I also learned that gangs, like I went into it thinking gangs were sort of like the mafia, you know, so it's organized crime and all they want to do is sell drugs and shoot people. Totally untrue. Um, most of these gangs, I would say, are much more akin to a college fraternity, as absurd as that sounds, than they are the mafia. And about 25%, and it varies from city to city, but about 25% of gang members are doing illegal stuff, drugs, extortion, whatever. The rest are in our high schools, they're working at the supermarket, fast food, or not working at all. The other thing I learned, and this was really important, I always assume there's this like kingpin out in, you know, Watts, California, you know, who's the big, big dealer or big distributor of the drugs, and he's pushing heroin and other drugs down into the gangs. That also is totally untrue. The distributors for drugs are people like us in the room, usually, the ones I know. Uh, in fact, the largest distributor uh, in North Carolina is in Greensboro, and he's a white guy that's not affiliated with any gangs. So that was really important because I was concerned that if the leadership uh, was investing in the drug trade and I was against the drug trade, then I was, it was an uphill battle, it wouldn't work. So when I realized that, I was like, huh, well, maybe we could start something with these gang members uh, and, and create a business that would change some of these things. So the first thing we did is we hired these three guys. They're really good at selling guns and drugs on the street. Hired them, threw them into um, Untapped, which Untapped has the most amazing culture in the world because I can do anything to them and it doesn't phase them. So we threw these three guys into our sales program. Untapped's got a sales team of like 60 people, let's say. And they're all, they have a sales program. Put them through there and surprisingly within a day, they were three of the most popular people in the office, so they integrated really quickly into our culture. More surprising, these dudes couldn't spell analytic software. We sell promotional analytic software into bars and restaurants and retailers and that sort of thing. They crushed it. This guy still holds records, and the others did, you know, did well. So we're like, huh, that's kind of surprising, right? But maybe we just found the only three guys in Wilmington that are a member of gangs that have a clue. We got lucky, right? So we said, well, shit, let's hire, let, let's see what happens if we hire more. So we hired these guys, these guys, and what we did is we put the word on the street, if you're a leader of, a, of any of the gangs, and in Wilmington we have blood, Bloods, Crips, and Gangster Disciples, that's kind of, and we have others, but that's the bulk of what we have. These guys represent the leadership of all the different gangs in Wilmington. So we, we hired them, and I made a deal. I said, I'm gonna pay you $50,000 a piece a year. I'm gonna put you through a boot camp, a uh, two month boot camp, and I'm gonna teach you how to make beer, of course, but also we're gonna teach you life skills and business skills. And if after three months, you sh or excuse me, two months, you show me that you can be disciplined, you need to get your ass in here, show up on time, be positive, get the work done, you show me that you can um, 
that you can take in all the knowledge. And we're pouring tons of stuff into these guys over the two month period. Uh, and lastly, you show me you have influence over the seven, 800 gang members in town because that's what I was looking for. I was looking for influence. And the deal was during this two month program, I don't want to see anybody shot in a gang related shooting at all. Now that doesn't sound like a tall order, but it is. Prior to True Colors, prior to July 5th, which is when we did this of last year, uh, we were seeing a gang shooting every, every week, certainly every other week, um, so quite often. Remarkably, it worked. And this is some of the, these are just some pictures that give you some idea. They have this classroom stuff, we had, we had athletic stuff, we, had, we took them around, you can see there's Cam Newton who's gotten involved with us. <clears throat> so they, we, we tried to show them great stuff, we went to New York, and anyway, it worked uh, remarkably. Uh, at the very end, we said, this, we, this was just sort of by chance we did this, but we said, the very end sort of the initiation worked. The initiation into now you're a founding member of True Colors uh, is you have to jump out of a plane, and here's a video of this. Now, mind you, these guys haven't flown, so they're the only people I know that can say they've taken off but never landed on a plane. <laughs> but, it was, but it was like a defining moment. So finally, we go through all this last year, and we're like, well, and honestly, I've been dragging my feet for six months at this point going, this seems silly, this bad idea, whatever, but it kept getting, it kept looking like it was right. So finally in January, we started the company. Um, it's a for-profit brewery, but it's, it's, it's committed very strongly. It's a very part, big part of our business to uniting rival gangs and stopping all the street violence. The company today has, as absurd as it might sound, four divisions. We're six months old, mind you. Anyone in the startup world knows this is crazy, right? Uh, but we're trying to get things done. I'm going to go through each of these, those, each of these individually, real quickly. So on the beer side, um, we finally got our building. Actually, we just signed uh, a lease a couple of weeks ago. We've got a 42,000 square foot building, uh, which gives you some indication of what the scale is that we're looking at. We expect. When we launch, uh, our, our beer should come out the door in December, probably January, because December's a bad time to start anything. But in January, uh, we expect to be distributing uh, in North Carolina and Georgia. We've teamed with a top five uh, international brewer uh, that wants to help us get uh, across the country by the end of next year, and we think we can do it. Um, we've got construction going on. <clears throat> we are putting together all of our distribution partners. We've done a ton of work, um, I guess just building partnerships. So aside from brewers and distributors that are behind us and, and, and pushing this, um, we also have crazy media uh, that have joined in. These guys all are either have started the story or will, and this is a short list, as absurd as that sounds. So we think when we launch uh, in January, we'll have significant, um, significant media, national media attention and which we need because as I said, we need to scale across the country. I see you taking a picture over there, you're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> um, these are some of our beers that we're testing. All of our beers relate to things that we're doing. So conversations, we generally believe that everything starts with a conversation. If I don't know you, I don't, you're making me nervous. If we start talking, it gets better. And each of these are, are different, different beers that relate to some story that are part of True Colors. The other, a second division we have, um, is intended to have to give us again more influence and what we do is called true impact it's kind of like a work program we hire people into true colors uh, they're full-time employees uh, we put them through a two-month onboarding program to get them ready and then we contract them back out in Wilmington today we've got about 25 people like this uh, and we're adding more um, we have a working <coughs> in manufacturing or construction or untapped got three of them doing data entry so a whole variety of things this scales though as we get into other cities across the country. We, Atlanta is our next city that we've started working with. Uh, the Atlanta mayor is interested in, she says she can hire 300 of, our, uh, of these guys to work in their work in their parks and recs uh, area. And we're talking to other large cities. And so potentially by the end of next year, we could have 500 to maybe even 1,000 people working in this program. And it, it gives us huge impact and influence within the gangs. Um, we also do events because we want to connect and we, we're constantly trying to find avenues to push our message in into the into these communities uh, Events for us are little things like we have once a, we have once a, once a week we have uh, In Atlanta and in Wilmington we have these gang or inter conflict in intervention meetings So every Thursday at 7 for example in Atlanta 
the leadership from various blood sets, Crips, GD, Vice Lords, whatever, come together at the table and they deal with all the mess on the street. Uh, and we just started in Atlanta two months ago and the cops there are telling me they have seen a 25 or better percent drop in gang violence since we started. It's, it's ridiculous, right? We also are doing a big event. Tony Robbins is involved with us um, and Tony is helping us create what I would consider sort of like a Tony Robbins for the hood, if you would. Uh, and we're going to test it in Wilmington. The first of these types of events is going to be in Wilmington in November. Uh, and if it works, then once we roll, once our beer launches, we'll be rolling these out in a different city every month uh, next year. We've got a corporate backer that's going to fund all of it. And then lastly, we've got what we call True News, which is kind of think like BuzzFeed for the hood. Um, and this is, this is sort of how we get into a city. As we move into different cities, the first step is, is the news because it, I hire four or five gang members, team them up with experienced reporters, and this is all video. We learn nobody reads anymore. Uh, and so uh, they go into the projects or into these areas, these urban areas, and pull out the most amazing stories. I mean, there's some horrific stories about killings and drugs and all of that, but there's also some just beautiful stories about families and kids and athletes and students and entrepreneurs and all this sort of thing. We also do watchdog stories, like there's one, there's a story I saw they did this week uh, uh, on the housing authority uh, in Wilmington where they're dropping the ball on a few things. Um, and it's been interesting to watch the sort of transition, we, we were still just testing a lot of this stuff. When we first did it, well, first we did it, we thought we could write a story and someone would read it, that was a huge fail. Then we went to video, and so then I had our corporate video guys do these videos, and so the first one, for example, we did was, we did a video on this dude who's got this barber shop that he started, and it's sort of like a community thing, it's almost like the movie, you know? Every Saturday, there's these people hanging out in the barber shop. It's a really cool story. But we had our, our, our corporate guys film it, and if any of us in this room saw it, we would probably go, wow, that's really well done. Well, all of our, all the people we cared about viewed it and goes, yawn, you know, it's boring. So then we hired, they said it had no soul. So then we hired this kid who's like 24 Keem who does music videos, like rap music videos, and he's doing them now. It's so much better. It's so much better. And so we're still trying to like test like how we do this. So we're putting out, put out 11 stories a week right now, um, and we're testing and we expect to launch it sometime in Wilmington next month, uh, and then in Atlanta the month after. Um, but this is something we plan to push in lots of cities around the country. And so, um, I mean, I guess in, in general, you know, when you talk about you know, what, what True Colors is about, obviously we're committed to doing good beer. Uh, it's critical. We believe that, that our brewery is going to be very big, very fast. Um, we believe that through that it'll fund what we're trying to do on some of the social stuff. I actually also believe that many of these divisions, once they get going, uh, should be profitable amongst them, themselves. That's certainly our intention uh, as we go ahead. Um, and in general, as I said, it's, it seems to be working. You know, that said, we don't know what we're doing. And there's nobody in the world that I know of that's hiring and working with active gang members. Uh, we've yet to be able to find anyone. Everyone requires that gang members leave the gang before they start getting affiliated with whatever the nonprofit is or whatever. But, and we're for profit, by the way. I'll fire your ass in a heartbeat if you don't perform. And I think that's where a lot of the power comes from. But it does seem to be working. Like I said, violence is down. I said there were no shootings during that two month period. We've only had two shootings since July of last year in Wilmington. That's down over 90% uh, in Wilmington. Uh, and we expect similar uh, results in other cities as we go forward. <coughs> so that's about it. <coughs> Okay, who has questions? questions? <laughs> Mr. Bill? Hey, George. Uh, what I'm not quite getting yet is how is this going to get replicated into other cities? Yeah. I could see beer distribution quite easily, yeah. but the movement itself and involving the gangs in the manner you did. How does that go to work? So, we, so the, I guess I didn't mention this. We, we, so we have obviously our gang membership, our gang leaders and, and others in Wilmington. Since then, we, I now employ the, lead, the national leadership of the five largest gangs in America. Um, I, spent, I was out in Watts and Nickerson Gardens three weeks ago. So at the very highest level now, uh, whether it's the blood, the blood sets, Crips, GD, Vice, pick whatever you want, we have their senior leadership on our team. And all of them, as ridiculous as this sounds, all of them didn't even hesitate to join. And, and the deal is, 
if you join us, you have to be openly talking about gang unity, you have to be openly talking about stopping the violence, and you have to be willing to go on those TV shows I showed you before, sit down at a table with all of your rival gang leaders, and say you are. Gangs are very hierarchical, so if, if, if the guy who runs the Bloods out in, in Watts says, hey, you're gonna join Purdue Colors or you're gonna support it, they do. So as we roll into Atlanta, for example, uh, as we did two months ago, the first meeting we held had over 200 people show up uh, because the leadership from around the country said, you know, get in there and listen to what they're doing. And everyone wants to be part of it as well. I, with rare exception, I mean, I've met probably at this point over a thousand gang members. I can only think of maybe two or three that said no. Uh, it's ridiculous. The other thing is if you look at the highest levels within a gang as, as to what they stand for, these gangs are organized like a business. They have written vision statements, key values. I'm not kidding. They're doctrines on what they stand for, and anyone in this room would be proud to work for them. You know, there are things like knowledge and brotherhood and loyalty and all this stuff. It's just that when it trickles down to the street, just like with any organization, you lose some of the messages that goes down, but when you get to the bottom ring, those are desperate people and they don't necessarily give a shit about what the mantra is. And, and the onboarding is not that good either. We're working now with the gangs on how to better onboard and educate people as to what they really stand for. Back here, George. Okay, I, um, I got a question. So it sounds like what you're doing is working really well, um, especially- Maybe, maybe. <laughs> We're real cautious about that. Well, especially here in the South, uh, I think uh, uh, the gang balance is uh, still relatively new here. It's still it's a, it's a process and work here. But I was wondering, how would your program work in a city such as like Chicago or Baltimore where it's like institutionalized, it's like generational gang members there where my father was a gang member, my, my mother was a gang member, my grandfather was, you know, sure. just institutionalized. So how, you know, have you had any um, success there or have you had any interactions with the, those folks in those areas? We have, um, I mean, my, my second city I wanted to target was Chicago because it's such a cluster, yeah. right? Uh, and, and so you might think that the reason that what goes on in Chicago is because it's generational. That's actually not the case. I love general, like, I can go, I have a list of cities that are listed by leadership quality and, and who has good leadership. What happened in Chicago, the problem is not this generational. The problem is that about 10, seven to 10 years ago, law enforcement came in and arrested all the leadership. And I'm not complaining, like, that was the right thing to do, but, because they were doing stuff. But, you know, it's like taking all the entire leadership out of a corporation, all of a sudden you get these little splinter factions. It doesn't get replaced right. So Chicago is mostly gangster disciples. That's where they originated almost. Today, you can hardly tell that they're GD. There are all these little street gangs that, are, that have very poor leadership, and that's what's going on there. I'm going to Chicago in two weeks because we're trying to talk about that, but honestly, the problem is that it, with Chicago, it's not that the gangs are there, so the gang leadership sucks. And um, we're trying to figure out how to deal with that. But I, honestly, Chicago and Baltimore are two cases. They're kind of fringe cases. That's not normal. Um, but it, it, it is because of a lack of leadership, not because the gangs have been there through generations. There another question? Yeah. Real quick, uh, live question. Will there be work programs for companies that are willing to bring someone on for a period of time while they're in your program? Um, that's sort of what's going on now. So uh, True Colors employees are contracted out through our impact program. And we put them into various organizations. We charge $15 an hour. Uh, we pay these guys thirty to $50,000, depending on who and what they're doing. Uh, so we lose money on them. But if I can offset 80% of my costs in this right now, we're super happy about it. Um, but that's exactly how this works. And so we've got, enough, we've got a dozens of companies in Wilmington that are hiring our guys, and they've been very successful. Uh, I got a couple of suggestions for you. Um, yeah. microphone closer to your, just closer to your mouth. Okay, how's that? Oh, good. Okay, first of all, I'm from Chicago, so I know something about what you're talking about. Secondly, on my father's side of the family, we're Sicilian, but on my mother's side of the family, we're Florentine. Uh, for those of you that didn't keep track of the Renaissance, that's where it started. But the thing is, I've got two suggestions for you. you know, down the road, you're doing great now, but one of the questions, the gentleman in the back there from me said, you know, what about beyond distribution? Uh, there's two things. One is, the people in the Czech Republic are taking intermodal containers and making them into microbreweries. So one thing you can do is to create a research program, people who maybe want paler brews or middle or darker brews, and people who want to use different kinds of grains in the malting process, let's say. And the other thing is, is that this can serve as a, a launch toward getting people to go into the community college system. 
to get more credentials and to go on in their studies of how food science works, for instance. My own background, by the way, is in biology and in okay. bioengineering. I mean, by all means, it, it, it is, it already for any of you that are in our startup that we're six months old, effectively, but you'll know seven, I guess. We're already way too unfocused, um, <laughs> like it's an issue. Uh, and so we only say no now. So yeah, you're absolutely right, but no, not. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, yeah. But we're trying to really, like, we're hiring leadership for each of those divisions, which we have them all except for one. Uh, and we're trying to get them to run those as an individual business so that we can try to grab focus into that stuff. And you know, the biggest problem with any startup, I've been in a bunch of them, is at this stage there's all these shiny balls out there. Everyone tells you you're fucking smart. You're not. And we don't know what we're doing. And so we're desperately trying to like get rid of all these shiny balls right now because we have way too many people. It's Every day somebody calls me and says, how do I get involved? Or can I get you on our news show? Or can I do this? Or whatever. And it's it, we've just got to keep control of that. Question here. Uh, great presentation, thank you so much. Uh, as a result of your programs in Wilmington, Atlanta, and wherever else, have you seen the population of the gangs increase, decrease, and why? Um, I, so obviously we have a very small sample size, just Atlanta and um, Wilmington, so I don't know if it's tied. They've increased. But, see, here's the, but here's the, so here's the thing, like, I like that. I like that. Like the schools have asked me to come in and talk about gangs, I can't, because I'm gonna go, you got a red coat on, you look like a crit or a blood. You need to come talk to my friend here and join the bloods. No school's having any of that right now, right? All right. Uh, not, and I get it, we're not, I don't even want to go there, but like the, the trajectory we're on is that if, these, if, this, if we can flip this thing and make it cool to be a, a proper gangster, then it becomes almost like a social committee. Like in Wilmington, we're, we're within, one of the things that's gonna be in our new building is a, 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 a gang entrepreneur center. To, you know, similar like a like some of the things you have here, I guess, to promote uh, small business and I mean, and really just how to grow your life. Like most most of these things are dealing with how to grow companies. It, with the clientele we work with is how to grow your life. But we see an opportunity to have the gangs become an integral part in these communities and driving a lot of this stuff forward. The the thing to realize is the largest organized group in any hood is the gangs. And so if I can get influence over the gangs, I can get influence over the hood. And if we can begin to then push that, our messages in through the news, through the events, through our apprentices or our impact guys, it maybe begins to have some change, we'll see. So George, when you started, George over here, where are you? We're here. <laughs> when you started, um, there was some equity given to the members. Is that still the case? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so some this is just like any other startup that we have. All of our guys have stock options. We didn't have any investors at all uh, until it was self-funded until, I don't know, maybe four months ago um, when some three friends of mine said, hey, you got to let me get involved. This, this is cool. Uh, so we took in three, or excuse me, $300,000, um, which is not a lot for what we're doing. Uh, this will, for all of you startup entrepreneurs, this will make you just go, you gotta be kidding me. But we raised that at a $3 million pre. Uh, we're raising a million five now at a $6 million pre. It's absurd, I know, but it's the way it works. Uh, we, we are opening around actually today, the, the first. Um, and it's, it's already sold out uh, at a $6 million pre. So anyway, that's, that's how it gets funded. But our, our goal is to exit this company. Um, we already have our exit opportunities that are in front of us. We've got metrics we got to hit. Uh, and so our, our goal is to exit the company in the next three to five years anyway, hopefully sooner. Question here. Um, you started off by saying this uh, uh, kind of a fundamental motivating factor here is economic. Um, can you talk a little more about that? Are these guys really in it to make money or is there a self-respect shift or is there something else going on as well? In the culture, respect's a bit, it's a word you hear a lot, right? Um, so um, you get respect through having money uh, always in that culture. Um, but what happens, what I see happening anyway, is that you'll have a drug dealer that'll start and you start making a little bit of money and then you make a little bit more. It does become a bit of a lifestyle and it becomes who you are and you do get respect from that. You're absolutely right. Um, but uh, most people, most gang members are not doing that. Most gang members are sort of sitting on the sidelines. Um, I like to hire the drug dealers. Like we, the police came to us and asked me, you know, hey, we have this huge heroin issue, as every city does, uh, and we ignored it for a long time because, I mean, I could, I know exactly who the big drug dealers are. I've hired several, some of them, and what I've watched is as soon as I hire them, someone comes in right behind them because the demand's so strong, right? Um, 
and so I ignored it, but then a cop started sending me um, emojis every day. A smiley face for uh, an OD that they brought back with, hit them with Narcan, and a frowny for when they died. And every day I'm getting people dying. I'm like, shit. So we started looking into it. This will just sort of give you an idea of how we approach it with the drug dealers. Um, and so we started looking into it, and what I saw was, I got, a, I got the data from 2016 through today. And you see this like sort of flat line through 16 of ODs, and it's, it's not good, but it's what you might expect. And it starts moving up in January, and it freaking spikes at the end of last year and into this year. And what we realize, or what we believe, is it's, the problem is it's a, uh, it's a product quality issue. And so we're looking at it from a business perspective. So we wrote, this, this sounds insane, but we wrote a business plan to get, that we give to drug dealers on how to be a proper drug dealer in 2018. And I actually think this is your year. This is the best year you're ever going to have. And we talked to them about lifetime value of a customer and customer acquisition costs. So why would you kill somebody that is giving you 200 bucks a day? And it's interesting, like they've started changing the way they think. I, have, I know major drug dealers that now are using terms like LTV and customer acquisition. <laughs> but, but the reason people are dying is because of fentanyl and the mix and, the, and how many cuts and all this it has nothing to do with the increase in addicts or increases not to do with that at all. It's all about product quality. The quality of the product is terrible for today compared to what it was a year ago or two years ago. So anyway, that's sort of off topic for your question, but that gives you an idea of sort of how we go at some of these problems. Are there more questions, anyone? Hmm. Okay, George, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, if some of you are interested in more information about True Colors, we will post uh, an interview they did on stage at the Wilmington Business Journal, and uh, you get to see one of uh, George's employees really have a kind of a, a monologue about his discussion with his mom about the idea of this and when he was one of the first employees and it's a really impressive um, you know he gets a he gets a little emotional on stage um, but you know he's uh, I remember meeting one of George's first employees a guy named Corey or Blanco and um, you know, he had just taken his son to Disney World for the first time. It was the first time both of them had ever gotten on a plane. So George's company is really having an impact. And as a native Chicagoan myself, I'm excited to hear that you're going to Chicago. Um, any reminders, any community events that we need to discuss before we break?